Yo, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that, man? Summertime. Hell yeah. W- without the heat. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, man, this is going to be the uh, the summer that wasn't. So that's why I wanted to kind of just bring on, you know, couple 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 of uh, things because when when they first put us under lockdown, it was back in March. We we're like, all oh, right, here's here's some some free time off of work. Then it went to April. Then it went to May, and we we're like, okay, well, okay, now we're bored. <laughs> <laughs> like. We're bored and about half pickled because right. what you do when you're on quarantine is uh, <laughs> you drink every day because you ain't got no vino air the next day. Like there's no like even even if you got to be at work, you're still here. <laughs> and th- the children, the children like to talk, and especially my child. She likes to tell true facts, and true facts are not they're not true and they're not facts, but she sure will tell them to you. <laughs> so. <laughs> There, there's all there's only so much of that each day and so but you know the wife and i'll sit there and say you know let's this, this will be like on a sunday while we're having drinks like man we really ought to start cutting back on this you know this quarantine thing's gone on long enough we weren't we weren't drinking every day whenever we were living in the world so there's no reason why it needs to be like that now let's let's give it a shot let's try to you know like not drink on the weekdays and then Monday afternoon, about four o'clock, the true facts are going, and my other daughter's crying because she misses her friends, and the dogs barking, and the yard guys' <laughs> edgers going, and we're like, "We'll start Shot. tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> Shot, I'm like yeah, but uh, like last few weeks, we've been trying, we've not trying to be good, we've actually been being good. But um, she comes up, she's like, "Man, I just really want to book a trip." <laughs> like to where? Yeah. <laughs> Like, even if there was places that we could go, they won't let us go there because we're from here. I'm in Houston. Houston Houston's still under under the thumb. Hopefully by, you know, it's starting to look like it's coming down now. So maybe, maybe, maybe. But That's good. Um, I'm, I'm not holding my breath for, for, for anything. But, so yeah, this is just talking about that, su- that summertime, that endless summer. Uh, yeah. This should this should have a Beach Boys soundtrack or a Sublime <laughs> soundtrack, and you know we can't do that because YouTube will knock us off. But uh, or That's even true. Apple these days. But just just put it in your head. You know you got that theremin kicking. The, the... <laughs> uh, so we're grown ups now, but yeah. we still you know unfortunately. Some summertime... Yeah, so, summertime still comes. So, what's what's some of your summertime traditions? What do you do? What do you, what's your what do you do whenever you can get out of town or be in town? But what's what's kind of your thing? Well, um, normally uh, it's just uh, it's turned into playing gigs here lately. <laughs> you know, but before that, it was you know we we would try to maybe take a little weekend off and go do some stuff. Last year we went to Cozumel and uh, kind of took a cruise and you know we enjoyed that pretty well. It, it was uh, my wife and I and and my daughter and her son, her son, her husband, <laughs> <laughs> and their daughter, and uh, so we we had a big time with that. But you know we we spent a lot of time just hanging out with family. Uh, we're all right here, pretty close, so we don't get much of a chance to just kind of chill out and stay home. Mm-hmm. So even even with you know the, your predicament that you, that we've had with you know the COVID thing, I've only had two weeks that I sit at home. The rest of the time I've been working my butt off the whole time. So, uh, and that's kind of the norm. I mean, I'm I'm one of those guys that I'm not happy unless I'm juggling way too many things at once. So yeah, I, I'm exactly the same way. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly I'm, the same way. I'm never at a standstill. So. When it does happen, then it just becomes a, a chill out session, and mm-hmm. most of the time that happens around in the summertime. Yeah, I think because we've been we've been blessed. I mean, with 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 our jobs and our schedules, um, my wife's busy season is generally the uh, the fall and the winter. 
So during the summer, she tries to take advantage and, and burn vacation. And, and we try to do a couple of things. We try to do a family, something or other. And then we try to do something that's just us because our kids are getting older. Right. But they're still they're still at an age where going to spend a weekend or a week or a few days at grandma's house is still a vacation for them. Um, so they can eat all the candy and they can stay up late and unlimited screen time. And then they, they go to movies and they, you know, it's for them, it's fun for us. It's babysitting, you know, it's like, Hey, take the kids and we're, we're going to go off. And so whether, whether or not we stay here and just book, book a hotel and get out of the house for a couple of days, or whether we go to Mexico, like you mentioned Cozumel, we've, you know, we've done Playa and we've done Cancun and, uh, couple of years ago in 2018 we went to seattle for like 10 days which was amazing yeah it's you know a different place now than it was then but uh <laughs> like i wouldn't want to go up there <laughs> no. and just wander around at the, at the very moment but it was it was pretty awesome so we generally try to have some kind of a vacation plan some kind of a a, a water feature for the kids yeah um you know just just it doesn't have to be extravagant either because i mean while while when it comes to gear like music gear and 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 music and kind of stuff i've got some expensive taste i'm i'm content to just wander around and look at trees and birds my wife will sit there and 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 read so we can just get away for a moment and just kind of get different change scenery and and kind of you know, stretch yeah. out a little bit. Sure. Um, and we're, we're, we're really missing it this year. Cause <laughs> and I, you know, not to, not to knock on anybody else. Cause everybody is, but man, yeah. it just, every now and then you have those moments. And, um, and that's the thing too. Cause they, they announced like school is going to be virtual. And my older daughter is just like, sure. Dude, yeah. I need to, <laughs> like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> she's already half a teenager. She's nine. She's already half a teenager. Like, I just need to see my friends. Sure. I don't really even care about the learning. I'm, I'm okay with like doing the virtual schooling, but we have to figure out a way for me to get out of here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> my wife and I look at each other like, you're dang right. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, need to, we need to find a place for you to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, for me, of course, my wife is exactly the same way. She's she's a nature nut, animal nut. So we've got, you know, it, that's always been kind of a, I don't want to say it in a negative way, but it's always been kind of a hold back too because if we take off for a week or something, we have to find somebody that will come up here and feed all the animals and take care of stuff and check in on everybody because, uh, you know, she's very, very particular about her animals. And... uh like I said, she is the kind that, I think she even said it last night. She's like, yeah, you know, this would be a nice day to go out and take a walk. And I'm like, I'm sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, um, we're that opposites of tracks things, right? So she loves to go out and, and walk and, and get hot and all that stuff. And I'm like, this is where I get to catch up on some crappy movies. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, we, that, was, that was a discussion we had actually yesterday. Straight up, like, it, it, it's funny because I'm not, I mean, I'm not knocking her at all, but I will, I will crack jokes. Uh, remember the book 1984? Oh, yeah. And like, they, they will talk about history and they'll say that, like, you know, we're at war with so and so. And then, like, on the very next news broadcast, we're at war with, well, like, we're at peace with our, with our former and we're at war with our allies. And yeah. they'll be like, well, it has always been this way. Yeah. So like just cer- certain certain things like you know it's like we have this <laughs> we have this certain brand of garlic salt that we've just always had like and every time you salt a dish she uses that and in the last like month three weeks or so she started using like regular like table salt it's like don't use that use this and I'm like when. <laughs> when did this change? She's like, it's always been like this. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, <it isn't. laughs> no. So uh, I'm sitting there like get get done doing several different things. I'm sitting there. She comes. She comes. She's got a leash on the dog. She's like, ah, oh, we're going to go. I'm like, okay, have fun. Yeah. She's like, well, why don't you come with us? I'm like, it's a hundred degrees outside. Right. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go out there. She's like, 
She's like, come on, get some exercise. Let's go for a run. And they're like, there's a record scratch in my head. I'm like, we've been together for 16 years. When have you ever known me to run for anything unless we're late for a plane? Like, I don't, I'm not gonna, just going to hop up in the middle of August in Houston and go for a run. That's just not a thing. But... <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's that's that being stowed up too. I'm long turning thing. on. I'm turning on on the fan, getting hot, thinking about this. Right. <laughs> like, it's dangerous outside. Yeah, my wife, <laughs> she she loves to mow too. I mean, she would live on a lawnmower, which we do a lot of mowing. But I've just recently started saying, okay, I'll I'll start really trying to hold up my end of it. So, but <laughs> she would live on a lawnmower, and I'm like, who wants to sit out in the hot sun? You know, 110 degrees, and just out there, just happy she can be mowing the yard. And I'm like, go, oh, too hot. Yep. <laughs> but as far so, as yeah. things that I used to really enjoy in the summer is, uh, this is back obviously when I was a kid. But you know, my mom would take me to one of the water parks. You know, where they had the big slides, and it's back when you actually had to sit on the mat, right? You took the little foam mat up there and you sat on it and went down through the tubes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And, uh, you know, this place had two tubes. That was it. Actually, it wasn't even, it wasn't even the tube. It was just the slide, the water slide, right? So if you, if you went up off the edge, you were just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So when I was in high school... Uh, buddy of mine's dad worked for one of the radio stations and he used to get tickets for all kinds of stuff mm. and um not not concert tickets unfortunately but he'd get tickets to like the golf yeah. charity event or whatever um giveaway stuff that they had on the radio and he'd have extras so um one year we got two season passes to astroworld which mm. if you're not familiar with astroworld it was built right across the street from the astrodome Okay, so the the eighth one of the world, right. where you know, and so the Astrodome is where the Astros played, and then you'd have the livestock show and rodeo, and then you'd have huge bands come in, like mm-hmm. you know, um, which it was horrible for music because yeah. it was just as big. It, it was not made for for audio, but it housed live music. Um, but it was just a big place, and then across the freeway from that was Astro World. And it was an amusement park and um, it was like an independent amusement park. And then at some point Six Flags bought it. And then, so on one side of, uh, on one side of the property, you had Astroworld and on the other side, you had Waterworld. Heck yeah. And so Waterworld was a huge, huge water park. And then, so my buddy and I both had season passes. So you talk about, you talk about awesome. (laughs) Like, was too too young to drink, yeah. you know. Like we this is back in the day, we we're hanging out at the mall and working at the grocery store and stuff like that. But uh, you know, he'd come over and it was it was like you imagine some fishermen now. Like, all right, we'll get our cooler, you know, like fill them up full of cokes, throw some snacks and, and like lunch next. We don't want to spend money on on food. Right, after all, it's expensive, yeah. and we got free pass in so. We can just leave, leave, come back, leave and come back, you know, go change, put on our uh, trunks, go go play at Waterworld for a while, go dry off, go back to Astroworld, ride the roller coasters. And right. We spend the whole day just, you know, you walk up to a thing and it's got a line. You're like, ride it tomorrow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go do something else. Uh, literally, the, they, they had like this because it was uh, Six Flags. So it was like Warner Brothers and they had Bugs Bunny. And you could go in there and, like, watch Looney Tunes. They had, like, this arboretum or uh, planetarium sort of thing where you, like, when they'd have shows, it would project them up on the ceiling. And you yeah. would go in there to cool off and take a nap. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, I think that was, like, the summer of, like, 92, 92, something like that. Wow. Just, like, every day. It's like, what do you want to do? And it was just, like, pinking in the brain. Well, we've got these <laughs> passes. Let's not let them go to waste. Man. <laughs> Let's just roll on over to the to the to the park. It was that was awesome. And then yeah. then uh, uh, this is like fifteen sixteen years ago because Astroworld was still working and people were going and needed some revamping. Um, they decided they wanted to build condos there, so they <laughs> they flattened the park like 
bulldozed it over and turned it into a big giant field and then whoever was going to build apartments there didn't and so now it's just a yeah. big giant field with no fun in it dude i I'm almost <laughs> i'm almost got the exact same story but kind of ties into last week's episode so the big thing here was opryland it's in nashville it's a two and a half hour drive that was an every summer church group or whatever we were going to opryland uh, and a lot of times me and my cousin, which we were, you know, just grew up together, they would take us and just turn you loose and say, meet us back here at so-and-so and clock is, you know, kind of the same story. And Opryland was just, it was the greatest thing in that area and, um, uh, kind of the same deal. I think they got in a lawsuit over a certain ride they had and some people got hurt got in a financial bind, and they actually tore down Opryland and built a mall. Now, this is <laughs> 90, 98, 99. So why would you build a mall? <laughs> at that point. At that point, because obviously, I mean, it's the mall's still there, and one of the things is they've got an IMAX theater in there, but that's really the only thing in that mall that's worth even going to. Wow. Because it's that same scenario. So it's like, man, what they threw away was, for this area, iconic. Everybody went to Opryland. That's just that's what you did. I remember one time we went just on a whim. It was my dad and his new wife at the time, my, my stepmom, and my wife, which she was my girlfriend at the time, and, and I went. And we all went together and had an absolute blast. But what, what sticks out is I never will forget... Becky, my wife, saying, uh, you know, this place would be all right if they stopped playing all this music. <laughs> and, of course, my dad's <laughs> like, it's a theme park. <laughs> the theme is Grand Ole Opry, country music. I mean, they're going to play it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew right then, yep, I picked the right one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. Go into the park, then, or to, to the theme park, and then, you know, I had my buddies, and it was funny because it was like the the way that the the names work. You know, you don't you don't really choose your friends. You just buddy up with folks, and you find out that yeah. you just, you know, be hanging out. But I had three buddies, so I had Jason Jordan, Jason Yeager, and then Chris Jordan. And Chris and Jason were not related. They just had the same last name. Wow. So it's like, who are you hanging out with? I'm with Jordan. Which one? Chris. Not Jason? No. Chris and who? Chris and Jason. Jaeger or Jordan? You know, like, get confused. like my mom would be like, who are you hanging out with? You know, like, wow, that's nuts. <laughs> um, but uh, so there was this pool, and the pool's still there, but um, they had a uh, Olympic-sized diving board like the big old platforms are like yeah. 35 feet high and they had a 25 foot and a 35 foot. And, uh, so Jason Yeager and I went to go swim at this pool and all the, all the time I was in high school, that was the thing. Like if you go down to the Hammerley pool, you have to jump off the high dive, like to prove you're a man, you know, it's like, it's right. just, that's what you got to do. And you get up there, man. And the pool's huge. Like it is a, it was a, it was a training facility for the, there's like a, a, a it's something different now, but uh, and it was a public pool, but it was like they used it to train Olympians and stuff. It was a huge pool and with the diving boards and it had, but man, you get up there on that high dive and you look down and you think you're going to overshoot it. It looks right. like something out of Looney Tunes. You like, yeah. you can, like you're going to hit the back of the, the, the concrete. <laughs> so you just kind of step off the ledge and fall and you fall long enough to regret having done it. Oh, yeah. Like, you can think about, like, oh, man, I should not have done this. And then you hit. And you hit like You try um, to go feet first and try to take the least impact, and you, your feet just instantly, like, it's like 10,000 needles just went into your feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and you, you, you sink so far in down yeah. that your ears start to hurt. Yeah. Because even, even though you're right side up, you're not diving, but your body just goes down, so you get into that... <laughs> that quantum level of, right. of, of deep water right try, well, try my, trying to get back to the top fast enough you're like i don't know if i'm gonna make it <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely dude and so you know we went up there and we jumped off it a couple of times you know multiple trips over 
over the course of the summer. And uh, so Jaeger started doing backflips off of things. Whew. Like he'd, he'd, he'd do a backflip off the side of his pickup truck. You know, he'd just stand there and like crawl up the side of his pickup truck and do a backflip. Like he perfected the backflip. So he's yeah. doing it like just jumping and being a dumbass all the time. Well, I said being a dumbass, like it, it was that you've seen those memes where it's like, oh, yeah, nobody, nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody jason's like watch me backflip <laughs> He's just like, way to go bro uh, so anyway he he gets up on that lower that middle platform and he's like gonna do a backflip off of it and he does a backflip off of it and sticks it perfectly like it, it it's it's an awesome yeah. jump um so i wasn't paying attention to what he was doing and I go off and I jump off a, a regular size high dive, like a little 10 foot board that, yeah. that the bouncy one. And I jump and I flip and I land in the water and I come up and I look up at the platform and he's on the high one. Oh no. Back and backing up to the edge to do a uh, backflip. <laughs> and so I'm kind of treading water. I want to watch this happen. Cause I mean, that was the first one was pretty badass. Yeah. Like, like no lie. I'm like, okay, if he, if he nails this, then he's like, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, I, I'm good to just step off of it and fall. But if he does a full on backflip, then that's killer. So he jumps off and stalls mm. and ends up doing a 35 foot belly flop. Oh man. He hits the water. I mean, it, it claps so loud. It was like deafening. And then after falling for 35 feet, he only sunk like two or three feet into the water. <laughs> yeah, his body <laughs> took the whole blow. <laughs> his body took the whole blow. The lifeguard was laughing so hard oh, that I man. ended up having to drag him off the side of the pool man. and get him out. And he was like purple. I'm sure. He was absolutely purple. Man. He made me drive. Like <laughs> he had a, a old standard Nissan. He's like, you need to drive. And he just laid down <laughs> in the back of the truck. <laughs> oh. Man, uh, so so going swimming like that put an end to some of his acrobatics for a while there. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> but yeah, going to the pool yeah. that was awesome. Well, <laughs> Summertime, you know. For like, us around here, we we had a couple of of local pools that were public pools, one in Greenfield and stuff. And I went to it a few times at a very young age, but all my teen years and the rest growing up, I had a cousin that uh, they actually had a, a pool, and that's just kind of where we went. So if we were going to go swimming, that's that's where we were going. So Well, Jason Jordan had a pool, too, and we'd go hang out and swim at his house. Yeah. But it was the lure of the big diving. Sure, It was yeah. like, that's that's yeah. where we're going. Like, it wasn't because of the water. Right. <laughs> it was because there was this big old diving <laughs> board that we were, like, mystified by. But, we, I mean, we did all kinds of crazy stuff. We left a concert one time. Same same little Nissan truck. Um, we went and saw like Metallica or something at the Raceway Park. And if you ever been to one of those big kind of outdoor festivals type stuff, then everybody's parked and everything's neat and orderly. And then everybody goes back to their cars and all the cars go and then it's like instant traffic jam for <laughs> right. like three hours. <laughs> like yep. nobody's getting going anywhere. Yep. And uh, so we were hanging out, you know. Of course, we're being kids. We're being dumbasses. So we're all, all three of us are hanging out, drinking beer, and like inching the truck a little bit, inching the truck a little bit. <laughs> and so Jaeger's driving, and I'm in the passenger seat, and Jordan's, for whatever reason, sitting on the hood of the truck, like talking to people and just, you know. Well, anyway, we kind of break loose. We get on the road, and, and Jaeger doesn't stop to let Jordan into the truck. He just pulls on the road and hits and drives, like pulls up to about fifty miles an hour with this dude sitting on his windshield, wow, flipping it, like freaking out. And uh, I'm like, yeah, dude, that was probably not the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> Jordan gets back in the truck later at the, at the next stop sign, and he was so mad, but he was like, that was actually one of the most awesome things that I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> like no control, like no seat belts. Like right. he's not sitting on a seat. He's sitting on a windshield of his little tiny truck. Like, ah! oh man. Wow. We yeah, we <laughs> some fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of our angst was done 
during school. So in the summertime, <laughs> didn't really get to see the guys very much that, you know, we tore up everything at school. We just, uh, I, I always had to work. So there was always that going on. Uh, so summertime, I'd go work with my dad and stayed with my dad quite a bit in the summertime. And I worked at a sawmill. So I didn't get to go hang out like a lot of the other guys did, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. I'd, I'd go, he, he, I'd work, I'd work with him, but then he would also sneak me into some places that he played and I could get up and, you know, play in the band at, you know, oh, that's awesome. 12, 13 years old. I'm sneaking into clubs and playing, you know, so, that's right. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, it's good in some ways. It's very bad if you're a mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I th- again, I think I think some of the stuff that 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 we did, and my poor mom, if she knew, she would just oh yeah, she she I would probably be in trouble now. She'd start you know like no, um, and problem, I think it was funny. Problem because, is, like, my whenever... my mom would know by the time I got home. She knew everything that happened because small <laughs> small town. I mean, she oh, would yeah. know that I'd been to the next town over before I even got back from there. You know, it's just like who you got spying on me because they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my mom. Uh, my mom always just kind of took it benefit of the doubt. If I said, I mean, I didn't really lie. I just say I'm going somewhere, and she, okay, and just yeah. be safe and don't, you know. Um, we did a lot of crazy stuff. It was kind of funny though because the actual like whenever we actually started going to see bands, uh, that took up a lot more of our time because you mentioned working. Like, yeah. Um, I worked a lot. You know, like I said, when I was working at that that, that mall in uh. At Christmas time, you know, I was like 17, 17, 16, 17, uh, 17, 18. Yeah. Um, I was working 13 hour days, you know, yeah. and, and just get there. Like I'd work from nine to eight, you know, nine to nine, nine to 10, whatever, whatever it happened to be. Cause there was always just like the still, so I was always working. Yeah. Um, in fact, you have those, those, those look back memories of like oh man we were at the clubs all the time and my one my one buddy's like you weren't you were a freaking radio shack selling batteries bro <laughs> like, we were at the clubs like oh man you're right you yeah. know uh but got to see a lot of shows um so that, that was another thing like that that little bit of extra age there where it's like okay well now now instead of going and dumping all the money into the record store we're actually going out and seeing the bands play yeah you know and um that started when i was probably about you know 16 17 18 something like that yeah and just kept on you know because there was somebody playing every night and uh so so working hard playing hard i remember i had had a boss at radio shack one time and i'd come in and i'd I'd, i smoked like crazy and i was drinking underage and all this but i'd show up after like two hours of sleep and and a uh and a shower and she's like, she's like, you're gonna burn yourself out if you keep burning this candle at both ends. And I'm just kind of like, eh, hadn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah, but, I think about uh, you know, just just like those stories there. Me and my my cousin that they, you know, they took he and I both in Nashville. I mean, again, you gotta remember it's a two and a half hour drive. They took us to Nashville, dropped us off in front of the municipal auditorium to go see Kiss at. You know, we're not even old enough to drive yet. We're 14, 15. And I'm thinking, wow. I mean, your your parents really have to trust you (laughs) Mm -hmm. to take you to a place that's two and a half hours away, drop you off, let you go in by yourself, leave, go do something else, come back, pick you up afterwards. And I'm thinking, there was no way I would have done that with my kids, you know, cause it's a, <laughs> it's a different time, you know, but still it is. Uh, you think about that. There had to be a level of trust there, even though they knew you were going to do things, get involved with things, but the, you have to give them, an, you know, the benefit of the doubt of I'm not raising an idiot, you know? So yeah, well, it's just, it's funny when you start thinking about that, about, you know, how much it has changed. Yeah. Well, I just remember it's like sometimes too, like, something never came up or, or whatever, but like, I remember the first time, um, I was like 19 or something. When I got first time, like I didn't even get caught smoking. Um, 
I had been smoking and my dad smelled it on me and was like, you've been smoking? And I, I just assumed that he knew that I'd smoked because I'd smoked for like two years. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah. He's like, since when? And I'm like, mm, for like ever? <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Like, you mean like just, just recently or like, I, I like, I seriously thought it was a quick a trick question. I was just like, um, and, uh, He's like, I don't ever smell it on you. He's like, I didn't had no idea that you smoked. And I was just kind of like, oh, well, that's good to know, I suppose. <laughs> um, I don't do anything special. I just, you know, pretty much everybody I hang out with smokes and that's what we do. So like yeah. never was never was being being sneaky or anything. Just never. I guess it just never came up in conversation. Thought you knew. So, yeah. I, I assume that you had to know because, I mean, I, I don't. If you look at my jeans, I've got a little pack, pack <laughs> invention. <laughs> it was back before cell phones, so it had to be something. But, right. I don't, you know, it's like, but sometimes they're just not paying attention. And, but no, dude, getting dropped off in front of the stadium to see Kiss, that's that's awesome. Like, I yeah. was I was nowhere near that, that, that. That would not have happened. My parents would have been like, well, first of all, my parents would have been like, who? No. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. That was one of those things too. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Parents used to get all kinds of hot and bothered over bands. Oh yeah, I mean, and and Kiss was probably the like. What's it supposed to stand for? Like kids and Satan surface. Yeah, night, Sur- night, Satan. Nights and Satan Nights service. Nights and Sa- Satan service. Yeah, I just remember there was so much. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Kiss army like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean they they were yeah. taking and they would take they would take lyrics out of context and show them at churches, you know. They would show mm-hmm. it says, "No, look look at this lyric right here. It says I'm the king of the nighttime world." And I'm like, "Yeah, but the next line is, and you're my headlight queen. <laughs> you're going <laughs> through the darkness." You know, it, you know, it's you know, it's that thing, you know, but yeah, man, I ra- I was raised, you know, uh and and, and Kiss was the devil. I mean, you know, but they were they were my band. I mean, I may have even told the story before, but my mom came in holding up my Destroyer album and said, "You know what this means?" <laughs> you know, yeah, you you like Kiss now? I don't know what does it mean. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I got the whole spiel. This is the devil's music, and I'm not fond of you listening to it and yada yada. I'm like, mom, I'm telling you, there, I mean, it, it's a show, you know. No, oh, yeah. So, well, my dad got. My mom, not to, not so much. I think my mom, well, I think my mom just didn't care. As long as I was being quiet, like for her, headphones was probably the best invention in the world because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, like, cause I had, I had this little radio and it was like, but, uh, so my dad got kind of caught up into, cause my parents were not super religious, but they had their moments yeah. and, um, he was on the road a lot. And so he got, he got the talk radio and listening to like swagger and stuff and they're talking about Mm -hmm. and um i remember it was def leppard actually was the band because hysteria was hitting big and i mean now we look at a band like def leppard now and it's pure sugar pop i mean it was designed to be pure sugar pop yeah but you look at the cover of the record oh yeah they didn't print they didn't print lyrics so you know if you if you don't if you didn't get that little turn of phrase, what does it mean? Right? right. Like, what did they say? Because they're, if they're, if they, they're not bold enough to actually write down what they're saying, you know, like do little things like that. My dad, my dad was anti Def Leppard. Right. And Scott and I talk about it on, on scary dad quite a bit. Cause I was like, it was a weird sort of hill for him to, to, to climb, to, to fight on. Cause he was way anti Def Leppard. Yeah. And I was way into Def Leppard for that exact amount of time that mm-hmm. Def Leppard was hot in 1987. <laughs> like right. once, once, once the hits kind of started playing through, it was very shortly after that I ran into Guns N' Roses and Def Leppard was over the shoulder. Right. Like, and Guns N' Roses was by far worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without <laughs> like, a doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I mean, like, Def Leppard so... was messing around with the ladies. That's about the extent of it. Where Guns N' Roses was the epitome of the bad boy image. Right. Yeah. So, um, but man, he, he, but he, I remember him telling me because, uh, you know, the, one of the guys from Def Leppard, he lives in, in a witch's house and it's like satanic and stuff. 
And I was like, okay, like, honestly, I thought that was kind of cool, right? Like, like the, how, how, did, how, how did they know it was a witch's house? You know, like, right. <laughs> like it's that because in New Orleans, and I didn't know this then, but in New Orleans, you walk around and they've got signs on the realty signs that say it's either not haunted or not haunted. Like, they have to say, like, <laughs> before you move in, uh, they have to, to say. But uh, what I found out later was it wasn't Def Leppard's. Uh, Led One of the guys, it was Led Zeppelin. Yeah. It was Jimmy Page, Jimmy and Page he was living in Aleister Crowley's Alist- house. Aleister yeah. Crowley's house. Well, my dad loved Led Zeppelin, so that was that was fun to be like, <laughs> "Hey, Dad, <laughs> <laughs> you want to wow. hear something neat?" <laughs> I didn't really. I didn't. I didn't give him a hard time about it too much. It was just one of those things that I. I once I realized it, I was like, "Wow, Led Zeppelin's again." You know your your scale of of bad to worse, but you know if, <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Page is a whole lot more uh, into the dark arts than Joe Elliott ever was. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe Elliott was into one thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, dude. Like when when it came to the and that's again summertime. You know the summertime vibes. We call the radio station and make requests. Do you remember that Heck world? Yeah. Oh yeah, like, man. You'd call, yeah, you you call a radio station and ask them to play a song instead of just going and playing the song and listening to it because it's on right. Spotify. You call a station, wait, and hope that they follow yeah. through with your request. Or um, if you got them to actually, you know, say, "Hey, here's a request for so and so," you're like, "Whoa!" Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like this is it was a big deal. You call the radio station. We we used to mess with the DJs, not not in a like like mess with them, but we used to request a song by a band that was playing. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Me and my cousin, like, hey, can you play "Talk Dirty to Me" by Poison? And he'd be like, it's you can hear it in the background. That's what's playing like, right now. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> See, that's that's like right opposite of what Danny and I always said we wanted to do. We wanted to have a radio station that played nothing but Iron Man twenty four hours a day, just to see how long you could stay on the air and even take requests. But when they call in their request, you still play Iron Man. <laughs> So it's funny you should say that. So <laughs> when I was in high school, we had a we have a radio station here in Houston. It's called 93.7. And it's been various things. It's changed formats over the years. But at one fateful night in the early 90s, one of the DJs got disgruntled at 93.7. And that person tracked a song and put it on repeat. <laughs> and then barred the door yeah. as he left. And I think I think he like left a big resignation, like I quit, you know. But that song was Pump Up the Jam. <laughs> and it was on a Sunday that he started it, like a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and that song played on repeat for like two days until somebody could get into the thing <laughs> and turn it off and cut the feed. Oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, dude, because I remember like I was flipping stations. Like it was a relatively new song, but it's like like pump up the channel. And then like there was re- <laughs> there was remixes. So like oh, every yeah. now and then there'd be a, like a dance remix, and so a, a two minute song would be four or six minutes long. And then yep. like after after a while, you're like, what is going on? <laughs> and then like a couple hours later, you flip the station back, and it still pump up the jam. <laughs> Go to bed, wake up the next day, you turn on your radio just to see if it's still, yep, it's still playing. That's hilarious, <laughs> it was, man. It was actually on the news. Like, <laughs> this guy, he was so cool. <laughs> but yeah, you're talking about Iron Man. It can probably go for about two days before they break in and <laughs> so, <laughs> shut it So down. the bad part of that is my wife was infatuated with that song back in the day. So I heard the, it a lot. <laughs> it's almost like jam. it was on nonstop, yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go out, like, that's one to go out on, right? <laughs> oh. Too bad it wasn't like the, the last Sammy Kerr record, right? Right. <laughs> Hotel well, starts getting d- destroyed, you know? <laughs> my, my, my dad had been a DJ, and things have, things lightened up a lot, you know, like FCC and stuff like that in, in the last, you know, 45 years. 
but man, like they used to do stuff like, like he he said that uh, they th- the FCC threatened to shut his uh, station down because an F that like on just some random check an FCC guy misheard words oh yeah and accused him of playing something so they had to go back in their log and they're like wait no this is like Deep Purple it isn't like <laughs> you know it's like no we we know the song and here's the printed lyrics and we go back in our log because they'd have to pay the royalties and fill everything out by paper but they'd have to um. But yeah, he got, he had to, like, somebody, he said he was hanging out one night at the station. Some dude brought up the first Black Sabbath Sabbath record. It was an import. It hadn't been released in the U.S. yet. And he had to sit there and listen to the whole record to make sure that there was no bad words on it before yeah. he could play anything off of it. And uh, I was like, well, that's pretty neat, actually. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, then he, then he, it was late night, he tracked, uh, tracked the first Black Sabbath record, um, to Lubbock, Texas. Wow. <laughs> Man. How far we've come. I know. <laughs> now the radio, now the DJs just cuss left and right. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of guys I listen to every once in a while on the way to work, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe they just said that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really changed. <laughs> and I think the FCC is more concerned about YouTube right now, but... They're trying to yeah. get their hands on it. Yeah, like they're not. They're not paying attention to the old formats. Yeah, I, I, but, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, unfortunately. So, but yeah, man. Like I said, it was just in the in the summer that couldn't be. It was more it was one of those things of just talking about all the fun little things that happened because what what really brought this on. And this is really cool. Um, is I recently was added to a Facebook group, and it's called, you know, Houston, all things rock and heavy metal in Houston in the uh, 80s and 90s. Hmm. And somebody just posted it and started adding random people to the group. So people started talking about memories. Oh, man, do you remember the backstage? Do you remember Hurricane Alley? Do you remember the Crooked Ferret? Do you remember, you know, you know, Deep Fat and the, the Coliseum? And, like, who, who saw this band there? And who was there here? Right. And who... And it, it was just like nostalgic as, as all yeah. get out. And then, so we're all like, oh man, I was at that Marilyn Manson show, you know, at the, at the, at the abyss, like it's it had like a 300 person capacity. It was an old movie theater. They, you know, it's like, yeah. I was at that show. I was at the show. And then somebody shared a YouTube video or a YouTube channel where it's all of these shows. Yeah. That's awesome. In their entirety, so yeah. Pantera at the Astro Arena, Marilyn Manson at the Abyss. My friends, my friend Teddy had a band called Hollow Point. It was a high school heavy metal band. They've got his show on this on this channel. Wow! It's like forty five minute set of of them just jamming on a, a metal uh, was it a metal zone uh, boss pedal? Yeah. Um, and screaming like Pantera, and it's like. <laughs> Teddy, dude, did you, did you know your, your your show's still? But man, we used to be at work at the pool, watching bands, you know. And uh, so that was one of those things. I was just like, man, I know you got some fun fun stories about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about well, I've been going down. Out. I've been going down that rabbit hole too. But instead of it being music, it's been old Memphis wrestling. Because growing nice. up. Growing up, Memphis wrestling was everything. It, it came on Saturday mornings for two hours, and then it came on Saturday night for another hour. So, you know, you were just, it, it was just what you did. And we went to a lot of matches. I had an uncle that, uh, he was cool, you know. I mean, he, he took me to see all the Godzilla movies when they came out. He took me to see all the wrestling matches. He was basically a, a, a little kid trapped in a man's body. <laughs> but he took us to, I mean, I've seen just legendary wrestling matches back in the day. And all of those are on YouTube. So you can go back and see these matches. And, you know, where Jerry Lawler fought Andy Kaufman, you know, that whole shebang mm-hmm. thing. I was there, you know. Oh, I was wow. there for that, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just, it's fun to go back and, like you said, relive some of this stuff. And uh, Kiss did a show in, I think about 98, and they played in Nashville. It was Gibson's 100th year celebration. And they were having a celebration concert, and it was 
Pat Travers, Fleetwood Mac, Kiss, somebody else. It was like an all day kind of thing. And, you know, some, some friends of mine that actually listened to our show were, were there. And we were talking about because we were there too. And come to find out that that video of that is actually on YouTube. You can go check it out. And it's like, man, Kiss didn't have the light show, any of any of the explosions or anything. And they rocked that place, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it's just one of those things we talk about. It's that, you know, those those special events, you know, that you're like, man, those are those are gone forever. But no, here, here's a video of it. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. It's incredible, you know. Oh yeah, dude! Like some of these, I wanna, I wanna get one of those YouTube downloaders and and uh, because like it's 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 a whole set, you know, it's an hour and a half concert, right? To to be able to pull that and throw it on a DVD, um, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, like I don't know if you're ever a fan of Marilyn Manson, but Marilyn Manson, whenever they first came out, oh, whenever yeah. their first their first record. Um, like he's always been theatrical, mm-hmm. but they were extremely colorful. Sure. So like, um, and they're playing on this little tiny stage. This, I mean, this little, I mean, you like the local high school bands played there, you know, yeah. but Nirvana played there and Pearl Jam and Smashing Pumpkins did whenever they were coming yeah. up as well. But Marilyn Manson was kind of on their way up. Like, like they had a show, they had a video on late night, uh, MTV. Yep. And it was extremely like it was one of those things like because I was older, you know, I was like nine, it was ninety five, so I was twenty, like nineteen, twenty years old, something like that, you know. So I had I had experienced Kiss, uh, Alice Cooper, um, you know, even even like a lot of the the sort of the eighties kind of, yeah. you know, shock rock like Wasp and you know those kind of guys, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, right? Like, like okay, yeah, it's a show. Like sure. it's, but you know, Manson came out and it was like, whenever you scaled it back and they were this big on a stage, it was nowhere near as cool as when you scale it forward and they're this big on a stage. Sure. Yeah. Very colorful. Uh, their costumes, their makeup, yeah. you know, all of their stuff, like all their little beepy lights and stuff they had. And it was awesome. And like that's the Manson I remember, and that's the one that I liked. And then right. it, like whenever the next record came out, it went, went real dark and serious. And I'm like, yeah. eh, really yeah. wasn't a fan after that. <laughs> well, that's yeah. that's where you they start intertwining with what else was happening at the time, Trent Reznor and all that stuff. So you you start seeing those influences start bleeding into each other. But you know, to me, what Manson was doing was exactly what. Now there's a distinction between when you say Alice Cooper because there's Alice Cooper, the guy, then there's Alice Cooper, mm-hmm. the band. And those right. early albums, if you go back and watch the show where uh, they're performing and Alice Cooper throws the chicken in the crowd and all that stuff and he doesn't know that it can't fly, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not something he was doing out of cruelty. He just, he's yeah. a Detroit kid. Hey, it's got wings, it's got feathers, and it can fly. And he said, you know, they he threw it and it went out in the crowd. And the crowd just ripped it apart. And he said, you know, next day on the papers it said Alice Cooper sacrificed chicken on stage. You know, and all this stuff. <laughs> but you go back and you watch that, and it is pretty dang close to what I think. You know, where where Marilyn Manson was, the band was kind of taking what they were doing, uh, mm-hmm. a little more on the gothic side. But as far as the appearance and and what they were doing, it's very very similar. And then somehow. After after billion dollar babies, I mean Alice became that figure, you know. So yeah. it's it's a weird transition in there. I, I mean, I'm a I'm a big historian of of the whole Alice Cooper story. It's weird because he was never intended to be the leader of the band. He was just a guy singing in the band, you know. Right. So well, I mean yeah. that that just that just happens. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And but you know that's what I said is it was fun because you you see those those. those like you say, you know, with uh, uh, Andy Kaufman, like yeah. that is a that is that's a pop culture moment. Absolutely, it, it's it's shown on TV. It's it's yeah. like you know this is this is an important moment. Yeah. Like I said, with the with the Marilyn Manson thing, you're like, okay, this is this is a band on their way up. Yeah, and I think it, it was it was only like a couple of months later they came back around. They played like a show in a in a vid, in an arena twice the size. And then, like, they were in stadiums and on late-night TV and just, yeah. like, all over the place. 
you watched them, you knew that's where they were going. Yep. You know, and you're like, okay, I'm, again, I liked that first record. I went and saw the show, but I saw everybody. I went and yeah. saw every show. So yeah. having seen a show did not make me a super fan. It was just like, hey, yeah, I like them. We'll go see them. It's like wow, seeing a movie. Are, yeah, yeah. I these mean, guys, you... these guys, these guys are awesome. They're going, they're going places. And yeah. then just have it because uh, White Zombie was the same way. Saw so them exactly. in a club show, and then like, boom, completely just through the roof. And yeah. quite a few other bands did that too. Um, but yeah, like. We talk about summertime. You remember the band, the Deftones? Oh yeah. We went and saw we went and saw them at this little club called the Urban Art Bar. And again, this was this was not really a. It, it, they had a stage, but it was really not not big enough for the proper live music setup. It was so hot in there. They cut their set short by like two songs. And then wow. we stepped out. We stepped outside, and there was just they were like wringing their shirts out, like dripping water out of their shirts, being like, Man. we just can't do it. Was seeing them in like July. <laughs> it's like we can't we can't play, man. We're, uh, we're about to fall over. But yeah, man. I guess we are pushing up against the hour. Sure. We got final thoughts on summertime. Well, you're gonna go play a show tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So, Speaking of being too hot to play, I mean, luckily it's kind of cooled off a little bit. But last couple of gigs have been extremely hot. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's it's fun, you know, and and. Uh, it's it's not the deaf tones or anything, but we have a good time. <laughs> you guys are good, man. I've seen your videos. Yeah, you're like, you're you're uh, when you choose a song, y'all y'all play it. You're pretty spot on. Like well, it's it's that's that's always been the thing, right? Is is you're kind of the jukebox, right? You you can most bands have that one or two songs that they do really really well because that's kind of their niche. But with, with this band. You want to be the jukebox. You got to be able to play a little something for everybody, and you know. Well, we say that, but you know, you kind of get past the nineties. We're kind of like, yeah, we don't play anything past that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, man. Yeah. Good bunch of guys. Y'all look like you have a good time too. Yeah, so. it's fun. That's great, yeah, man. man. So yeah, summertime is full of uh, a lot of sweat and a lot of gigs. Yeah, I'm hoping that things will start opening up as it starts getting cooler so we can get outside and play some more, go to, go yeah. to some shows. I'd love to go to some shows right now. Bars are still closed here. Like we don't have, we don't have bars. Well, technically they are in Kentucky, which is where we play, but the places that we're playing are actually considered like a, it's a dock, it's a marina. So it's okay. outdoors. So it's a little more open. It's not really considered a bar, but they do serve alcohol and they do have food. So for some reason, that's a little bit of a loophole there. And uh, plus, it kind of keeps us from saying that we're playing bars too. I mean, this is a you know, it's open to families. So yep. you know, it's kind of a cool gig. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, I'll let you get some sleep because you got to get up and go to work and then go play. So sure <laughs> I, I know those days, but, uh, but yeah, guys, if you're liking what you hear, man, go hit up Facebook, give us a like or, uh, Instagram or Twitter or even YouTube. I believe we've got some stuff going on up there oh, yeah. and, uh, we'll see you next week. Adios. Adios.